Hello students, in the current video I will talk about the importance of management accounting. When you talk about the importance of management accounting, you must understand that management accounting is very significant in making strategic decision of the organization. In the strategic decisions, the management accounting plays a very significant role in allocation of resources besides optimum usage and optimum utilization of resources even. This optimum utilization of resources and allocation is very significant for the growth and profitability of the any organization. When you talk about the importance here we must understand that the management accounting facilitates in decision making in the sense what the management accounting will provide information to the managers for making strategic decisions which are very significant for the development of the institution or organization. Efficient resource allocation. Allocation of resources is very significant as far as the business organization is concerned because the resources are very scarce and can be utilized alternatively. Therefore, efficient allocation and optimum usage both are very significant for the development of organization. Effective cost control. Unless and until you control your cost, it is difficult for you to enhance the profitability. So therefore cost control is possible through efficient management strategies only. And supporting business growth. Unless and until you don't take proper strategic decision, it is difficult for you to grow your business, to bring the business in profitable situations. Therefore growth of the business is depends upon the strategic decisions, that is prudent decisions. That is possible with the help of management accounting information and data then enhancing profitability so profitability is a blood and breath for the organization unless and until business earns profit no business will continue in the sense owner or entrepreneur is keen interested or stakeholders are keen interested in profitability of the concern so this is the basic importance of management accounting in various areas i hope i made you understand Second short question, from the following information, find out the amount of profit earned during the year using marginal costing technique. So this question belongs to marginal costing and break even analysis chapter. Information provided is fixed cost rupees 5 lakhs, variable cost rupees 10 per unit, selling price 15 per unit and output in the sense the production during the year is 1 lakh 50 thousand units. Now we are asked to find out the profit. So quite easy to calculate profit. So first we have to find out the amount of sales that is 1,50,000 units into selling price is 15 rupees per unit. So total sales comes to 22,50,000 minus variable cost. Variable cost also similarly we can calculate 1,50,000 units into variable cost per unit is rupees 10. So if you deduct that is 15 lakh rupees we will be getting then the resultant figure is 7,50,000 it is called as contribution. From this, we have to deduct our fixed cost. The fixed cost comes to how much? That is already given 5 lakhs. Once you deduct 5 lakhs, the answer we are getting 2,50,000. This is our profit. In this way, we have to calculate the profit. Now, I will cover the topic advantages of budgetary control. Prior to understanding of budgetary control, we must understand what is budget is actually refers to. Budget is refers to as a planning of future expenses as well as future income so that we can compare our income with expenditure. If expenditure is more, we should procure the funds to finance those expenditure. If income is more, we must plan how to utilize that income properly to enhance the growth and profitability of the business concern. So budget is precisely planning of future expenses and losses. Now we will understand budgetary control. What do you mean by budgetary control? And bear in mind budgetary control is a very significant topic of management accounting. And this will be used by management accounting, management accountants to make strategic decisions. It is an internal area of a subject which will provide lot of information to the managers to make strategic decisions. So it defines the objective and policies of the undertaking as a whole. 
this budgetary control will define the objectives and policies of the business organization and how to utilize the scale resources that has that are available with the firm to maximize the profit right so that's the reason why budgetary control has become an essential tool of the management for controlling cost and maximizing the profit controlling cost when you decrease the cost you can maximize your profits it helps in improving financial performance by ensuring effective use of resources resources are very scarce it should be used very properly so that we can gain more benefit out of this resources and resources will have optimum utilization as well as alternative utilization even it helps in better decision making for allocation of resources resources should be allocated on various profitable ventures then only we will earn greater amount of profit if we don't allocate on profitable ventures or better ventures then it will be difficult for the organization it increases the accountability of various individuals and various department of course the budgetary control system will set the targets for the department set the guidelines set the limitations for the department how to utilize the fund how much it should be utilized how to get the optimum benefits therefore it will create the accountability among the departments as well as the individuals it improve the coordination and cooperation in various department of course unless and until there is a high degree of cooperation coordination among the various departments of the organization it is not possible to achieve the targeted goals or achieve the organizational objective therefore the budgetary control system will help us in creating cooperation and coordination among the departments cost control and cost reduction is possible by efficient use of resources unless and until you use your resources optimally it is difficult it is not possible to reduce the cost cost reduction is very significant because nowadays market is very competitive unless and until you sell the product at a competitive price you cannot survive in the market right so these are the various areas or advantages of budgetary control system for the organization i hope i have given you clarity and clear picture of the advantage of advantages of budgetary control now i will explain the standard costing variance analysis topic uh, material variances problem this question was given for four marks in the university paper and quite easy to solve this problem and uh, if you check the direct information we have given quantity standard and actual rate per kg that is standard and actual and whereas we are asked to calculate material cost variance and material price variance quite simple to do so when you come to the solution what is the formula of material cost variance mcv sq into sp minus aq into ap where sq stands for standard quantity sp stands for standard price aq stands for actual quantity ap stands for actual price right and already i made the video related to this material cost variance material variance analysis i will share the link of those videos in the i button as well as in the description please do watch those videos to understand better this concept now this is a university question paper question i am covering now so when you uh, know the formula just put the formula and get the answer mcv is equals to uh, that is sq is 10 s then sp is sorry sq is 40 sp is 10 aq is a 48 and ap is 12 so simplify this equation mathematical equation so 10 14 to 10 400 minus 48 into 12 576 that is equals to 176 a why did i write a because answer is negative therefore it will be written as a a stands for adverse this is the way we can calculate mcv formula mcv through using formula and next is mpv mpv is in the sense price variance in the sense difference between the price so sp minus ap multiplied with aq then apply the formula actual quantity is 48 and standard price is 10 minus actual price is 12 therefore 48 into minus 2 is equals to 96 a is the answer why i am writing a because it is an adverse minus figure once you calculate mpv then muv muv 
we were not asked the question but very simple to calculate that I am showing you can practice this. MUV formula is R MQV both the ways we can call, we can call it. So the formula is SQ minus AQ that is standard quantity minus actual quantity. So quantity difference SQ minus AQ. Whereas in case of MPV we took the difference between price. In this way you can remember the formulas also. SQ minus AQ multiplied with SP. So 10 is the SP into 40 minus 48. The resultant figure we will get 10 into minus 8 is equals to 80A adverse. Right? Once you get MCV, MPV, MUV, you can calculate MCV in one more way. Right? It is based on the information that you have available that you have been provided in the question. MCV is equals to MPV plus MUV. This is also one of the ways. So already we have the answers. No, we can apply and we can get the answers. So 96A is MCV. How we can get this 96? Sorry. MCV is 176A. How we can get MPV is 96A plus MUV 80A. If you make the summation of both the adverse 96 and 80, you will get 176A. Right? Then MPV is equals to MCV minus MUV also we can do. I hope I am giving you clarity about this. So this is very simple and very easy to calculate. So that is 176A minus 80A, 96A we will get. Then MUV is equals to MCV minus MPV. Again, one more way. So 176A minus 96A, 80A. So this is the way we can calculate these variances. Right? That is material variances. Clear? Now I will cover the most important topic that is objectives of financial statement analysis. Prior to understanding the objectives of financial statement analysis, we must understand what do you mean by financial statements. Financial statement is refers to a document which will be prepared at the end of the financial year furnishing the data of financial data of the entire financial year in that financial statement. The financial statement includes your what? Trading account, profit and loss account, this will be called as income statement even collectively uh, and balance sheet of the firm or the organization. Besides these three or two documents, income statement and balance sheet, it will also be providing the data related to cash flow analysis of the business and ratio analysis of the business and notes to accounts and notes to balance sheet. These all collectively called as financial statement. So what is the objective of this financial statement which will be prepared at the end of the financial year furnishing all the financial related data. So you must understand the financial statements are prepared with an objective to provide information to whom to the shareholders, investors, financial institutions, general public and prospective investors why it will be provided to them to make prudent decisions in the sense what suppose if you have surplus money you wanted to invest where you will invest in which company the financial statements will provide that information to you to make a decision whether to invest in a particular company or not to invest in a particular company for shareholders for investors for general public as well as financial institutions for sanctioning the loans right so this is the basic objective of the financial statement analysis it helps in understanding the financial performance of a company over past years the past financial data will provide the information to assess to analyze to identify whether the business was performing well in the past or not what is the performance of the business with regards to financial data is concerned it helps in assessing the current financial position of the company. Current financial position even can be obtained with the help of the information provided in financial statement. It provides information of operational efficiency of an organization. See, through analyzing the revenue statement, that is income statement, we can understand if the business is earning more profit, we can come to a conclusion that the business is doing well. Operationally, it is doing well. If the business is not performing well, in the sense, its profit will always decrease. That is the basic thing that we can get the information from the financial statement. It helps in predicting growth and profitability of prospect of an organization. 
See, prediction is very significant anticipation. Whether the profit is increasing or growth is taking place in the business in future, that we must understand and analyze and decide right now so that we can make a decision to invest in that company, whether to invest or not to invest. So predictions of growth and profitability is very significant area that will be provided by financial statement analysis. It helps in raising the loans from financial institutions and banks. So the financial statement analysis will provide the information to the financial institutions as well as facilitates the organization to raise the money from the financial institution. Based on the financial efficiency only the financial institutions will sanction the loans. So these are the basic objectives of financial statement analysis. I hope I have given you clear picture of objectives of the financial statement analysis besides what is financial statements even. I hope that I have given you clarity. Please do subscribe my channel, mentor the trusted guide and motivate me to make more qualitative and informative videos. See your subscription and uh, likes, comments will play a very significant role in providing quality content. Thank you very much. Now this is the question related to ratio analysis. This was asked for 4 marks in university examination and we are asked to calculate debt equity ratio, proprietary ratio from the information. The information is equity share capital 5 lakhs, preference share capital 3 lakhs, reserves 2 lakhs, current liabilities 1 lakh, 8% debentures, fixed assets 10 lakhs and current assets 4 lakhs. This information is provided and we are asked to calculate what ratio ratios of debt equity ratio and proprietary ratio. When you come to the answer, how to calculate these ratios? Ratio analysis is a very important topic as far as the exams are concerned. And I have already covered the video related to formulas. I will share those video links in the description box. Please do watch those videos to understand better. All the formulas are available. So first, debt equity ratio. What is the formula of debt equity ratio? Long term debt divided by shareholders fund. When you talk about the long term debts, long term debts given in the information is only one item that is 8% debentures rupees 3 lakhs. Then long term debts in the sense any liability, any debt which is payable over a period of time that is minimum 5 to 10 years, right? 5 years are minimum and 10 years, 20 years that is a long term loan raised by the company will be ready in the future. Then shareholders fund. What do you mean by shareholders fund? Shareholders fund refers to equity share capital plus preference share capital plus all the reserves and surplus that is PNL account, general reserve, capital reserve, all those comes into reserves and surplus. So all this collectively called as shareholders fund. So when you see the shareholders fund, we have equity share capital is 5 lakhs, preference share capital is 3 lakhs and reserves are 2 lakhs. So the summation is 10 lakhs is the what shareholders fund. So once we get long term liabilities and shareholders fund, we can apply the formula and get the answer. So long term debts are 3 lakhs and shareholders fund is 10 lakhs. That is equals to 0.3 or we can call it as 30% even. The ratio if you multiply with 100 that will become percentage. So 0.3 is the debt equity ratio. In the sense, the total debt out of the shareholders fund is 0.3 of the organization. In this way, we can conclude this ratio. And the next ratio is proprietary ratio. The formula of proprietary ratio is shareholders fund divided by total assets. What is the percentage of shareholders fund out of the total assets of the firm that will be represented through proprietary ratio, very important ratio for making decisions in financial decision making. So total assets is equals to fixed asset plus current assets that is fixed asset given 10 lakhs, current assets 4 lakhs, 14 lakhs is the total assets. Then apply the formula because already we have calculated the shareholders fund 10 lakhs. Just now we calculated 10 lakhs divided by 14 lakhs into 100 that is 0.71 or 71 percent if you multiply with 100. It refers to what? The shareholders fund is 71 percent out of the total assets of the firm. So this is the precise way of calculation of these ratios. Clear? In this video, I will cover the most important uh, topic that is importance of funds flow statement. This is the very important topic as far as the funds flow statement theory questions are concerned. So this question you can find in Usmani University or any other university 
question papers the for short questions that is importance of funds flow statement when you talk about the funds flow statement first strikes in your mind is fund flow statement problem solving in that we will prepare three statements one is statement showing changes in working capital to calculate increase or decrease in working capital next pnl adjustment account to calculate either funds from operations or funds lost in operation then finally we will prepare statement uh, statement of sources and application to find out what is the source that we have got the money and how did we apply that money so these are the three things are very significant in order to understand the importance of funds flow statements right so funds flow statement precisely concentrate on various sources from which funds are raised and how those funds are put in or utilized or applied analysis of funds flow statement helps in answering the questions which on which questions such as what is the amount of funds generated from operations how are the fixed assets of an organization financed in the sense how did we get the money to finance our fixed asset to purchase our fixed asset to produce the goods and services which we can sell and earn the money right it helps in assessing the liquidity position short term financial obligations of the organization in the sense we focus on current assets and current liabilities to understand short term liquidity position it helps to find out the find out capital utilization efficiency of allocating funds for acquiring fixed assets and meeting working capital requirement here we are covering two things one is long term and short term long term financing of fixed asset how it will be done through which source of funds it will be done either issue of shares or issue of debentures or issue of preference shares and short term liquidity that is working capital requirement through which current assets it will be done that will be analyzed and understood it helps in evaluating financial performance by calculating funds from operation if your funds from operation are good or huge amount then you are financially efficient and you are performing very efficiently you are financially sound if you are losing the funds in operation then you are not performing well that is a clear picture we can draw from this fund flow statement it helps in making strategic decision as the data provided by funds flow statement is used by management since this is one of the management area of subject that is funds flow statement one of the management area where the internal management use this data to make strategic decisions clear so these are the base, basic various ways which shows the significance that is importance of funds flow statement i hope i have given you the clear picture of importance of funds flow statement so first question is the short question which was asked for four marks at eighth question in this question we are asked to calculate cash flow from operating activities the information furnished in the question is total sales total purchases total expenses and under that prepaid expenses opening closing both we have provided then opening debtors closing debtors opening creditors closing creditors besides this the last information is outstanding expenses closing balance we have provided with the help of this information we are asked to calculate cash flow from operating activities when you come to the solution we have to write a we have to prepare a format cash flow statement uh sorry not cash flow statement cash flow from operating activities one format we have to prepare in this what we have to do now we have to calculate cash received from customers if you see the working note one we have written total sales 160000 which includes you of debtors balance even opening as well as closing so what we have to do here opening debtors will be added to sales and closing debtors will be deducted why should we add opening debtors and why should we deduct closing debtors because debtors created without receiving the money in the sense when we sell goods on credit basis debtors will be created opening debtors in the sense last year whatever goods we sold on credit basis the money which we have money might have received in the current year that is the standard assumption whatever goods we have sold now on credit basis at the end of the financial year that will be received in the future therefore we are concerned about only cash received therefore opening will be added closing will be deducted 
with the help of this we can calculate cash received from customer that is 150000 this amount will be recorded as cash received from customer in working note 1 referring as 150000 i have kept it now what we have to do we have to calculate the total expenditure incurred in the firm how we can calculate that first second working note if you see uh, we have calculated cash payment made to creditors for calculation of this the information we have received in the question and we have utilized this total purchases are 120000 the total purchases made during the financial is 120000 add opening creditors less closing creditors what is the standard assumption that the creditors which when creditors will be created when we purchase material on credit basis without making the payment we receive the material then creditors will be created therefore what we have to do what we have to do here opening creditors will be added in the sense last year whatever credit purchases we made the standard assumption is that to this year in this current year we made the payment closing creditors will be deducted what is the assumption whatever credit purchases we made at the end of the financial year we will make the payment in future now we did not make the payment therefore we are deducting this item so with the help of this we can calculate cash payment to creditors and the third working note is also very significant here total expenses given in the question 12,000 and further information is opening and closing uh, prepaid expenses and outstanding expenses this information even we have provided this information is related to expenses so what we are doing first we are adding closing prepaid expenses what do you mean by this closing prepaid expenses at the end of the financial year whatever prepaid expenses we made that should be added because while calculating this expenses we did not consider this expenditure prepaid expenditure because this belongs to future year so when we follow accrual financial system we don't consider therefore what we are doing now now we are adding since we made the payment though it is belongs to the future year therefore closing prepaid expenses will be added in the same way opening will be deducted right opening prepaid expenses will be considered in the financial year but last year itself we made the payment therefore it should be deducted in case of outstanding expenses opposite we have to do closing outstanding expenses will be deducted outstanding expenses in the sense still we did not make the payment but we have recorded as an expense in the financial year according to accrual system therefore this expenditure should be deducted closing outstanding expenses in the same way if opening outstanding expenses is given it should be added since in this question it is not provided we are not considering so like this we got total cash paid for expenses is 6000 once you get this value, the summation of these two working notes, that is second and third, will be written as cash paid to supplier and employees and all expenses. Once you deduct this 1,50,000, sorry, once you deduct 1,16,000 from 1,50,000, you will get resultant figure 34,000 that is called as cash generated from operations. Clear? In this way, we have to calculate this. So now it is a theory question. This was asked for 12 marks. Define management accounting and explain the scope and functions of management accounting. For this, I have already made the videos uh, with the title of what is management accounting and its definition. This is a very important video. Management accounting features, functions, advantages, limitations all will be covered. So you will be uh, finding functions in this video. Whereas definition and what is management accounting in the first video. Whereas objectives of management accounting a separate video I made so you can watch that video besides these three videos one more video very important question that is management accounting relation with financial accounting relationship and differences so these videos uh, links i will be sharing in the i button as well as in the description box in description box i will also share rest of the all problems and solution videos also i hope those videos will be very helpful to you so you watch these videos and you can easily get the answer of this question we'll see the first question right 
uh, from the following information related to a Coromandel Company Limited, which produces washing machines. Cost per unit material is 50, labor 25, direct expenses 15, fixed expenses 10, profit 20, selling price 120. The production capacity of the factory is 10,000 units. At present, a supplier has offered to sell the same item for Rs. 95. Should the company produce the item or buy it from the supplier? Give your reason. See, basically, whenever we are working out decision-making problems, when we have a situation where whether to produce or buy from the outside market, then the most important concern would be our variable cost, right? See, generally what happens here, when we purchase from our product from the external market, that is outside, outsiders, then what will happen? What cost we can able to save? That is most important. In this case, which expenditure we can able to save? Only variable expenditure we can able to save. Whereas, the fixed cost will remain constant. So, that's the reason why our high degree of emphasis and concentration would be on the market price at which we are purchasing will be compared with the cost that is variable nature in the factory which we will be incurring, right? So, we will compare both the cost and we will decide based on that. If the selling price is lower than the variable cost that we are incurring in the factory, then we will purchase. If the variable cost is lower than the selling price that we are purchasing from the outside market, then we will produce the product. This is only the basic ideology that we need to keep in mind because the only variable cost element that we can save if we purchased from outsiders, right? So, see the solution. When you talk about the solution, the most important is the same thing what I have explained here. If the, offered, if the offer of a supplier is accepted, only variable expenses will be saved, whereas the fixed expenses will remain, continue to be incurred even if the item is purchased. Therefore, purchase price should be compared with variable expenses to make the decision, right? So, only one thing you bear in mind, variable expenses should must be kept in mind for making decision, right? So, when you come to this question, uh, we have cost of the making the product. Besides, we have provided the uh, purchase price from the market that is 95. So, uh, we will take first purchase price is 95. Then, we must compare with the variable cost of the production. right? So, when you talk about the variable cost of the production, it comes to uh, 50 rupees is the material, 25 labor and 15 rupees is the uh, direct expenses, right? So, these all three comes together, 90 rupees is the variable expenses, whereas fixed cost 10 rupees per unit will incur irrespective of our decision. Therefore, we don't bother about the fixed cost, we will take up the variable cost that is 50 plus 25 plus 15 that is total 90 rupees. Therefore, which one is the lower? The lower is the variable expenses for making the pr product. Hence, our decision should be since the variable expenses are lower than the purchase price, the company should continue to make the product. So, this is the simple questions will be asked in the university. You can make, uh, you, you can easily give the answers by comparing the variable cost. Like, so like that the same one more question, two more questions will take up the university level questions and try to resolve this issue of decision making problems. Now, we will take up the 10th long question. So, this question is flexible budget question. From the following information related to a flexible budget at 60% capacity. So, the information provided is at a 60% capacity. Find out the overhead cost at 50% and 70% capacity and also determine the overhead rate. Right. So, the information we have provided at 60% capacity variable overheads, indirect labor and indirect material we have provided, semi-variable overheads, repairs and maintenance and electricity 
that is repairs and maintenance 70 percent fixed and 30 percent variable we have provided electricity 50 percent fixed 50 percent variable whereas fixed overheads office expenses including salaries insurance depreciation and the last information is very important estimated direct labor hour this information is required to calculate the overhead rates right so this question we will solve now so again i have taken the question when you come to the solution if you see the table i have prepared for 60 50 and 70 percent capacity 60 i kept in the middle which is already provided then 50 percent and 70 percent when you come to the variable overhead indirect labor indirect labor at 60 percent capacity is 10,500 right now we have to find out at 50 percent capacity and 70 percent capacity since 10,500 is at 60 percent capacity therefore simple equation 10,500 divided by 60 into 50 we will get 50 percent capacity in the same way 10,500 divided by 60 into 70 we will get at 70 percent capacity i hope you understood this way of calculation I have clearly mentioned even that how to calculate the workings even then we have provided uh, the indirect labor in the same way indirect labor even sorry indirect material even was calculated 8400 divided by 16 to 50 and 70 we get the answers so when you make the summation we'll get total variable overheads then we will take up the semi variable over first variable overheads then semi variable overheads under semi variable overheads we have repairs and maintenance working note one i have mentioned here when you come to the working note one the repairs and maintenance we have given is 7000 of which 70% is fixed 30% is variable so we have to divide the portion of variable and fixed so if you see have uh, done the calculation in working note 1 variable is equals to 7000 into 30% that is 21000 sorry 7000 into 30% that is 2100 whereas fixed 7000 into 70% that is 4900 once we get the variable and fixed proportion divided then we can easily calculate at 50 60 and 70 percent 60 percent is already given that is 70,000 that is only our basis of calculation so variable overheads the same way 2100 since it is variable at 60 percent capacity so 2100 divided by 60 into 50 into 70 we get the 50 percent and 70 percent then fixed cost we have given so total semi variable cost we got at 50 percent capacity 6650 at 70 percent capacity 7350 the same values we have plotted in our main table then electricity in the same way we have done the calculations 50 percent 50 percent right so variable sorry here it is uh, printed 70 so variable is 50 and fixed is also 50 that is 12,600, 12,600. It is not 70%, it is 50%. It is a mistake. Please rectify. Then we, we have uh, calculated the total. That is variable as well as fixed. 12,600 into 50 by 60, 12,600 into 70 by 60. Then fixed is already calculated, 12,600 then we got the total amounts in the same way we have written the total amounts of electricity is 31100 sorry 23100 for 50% and 27300 for 70% so we got to total semi variable overheads b so a is total variable overheads b is total semi variable overheads once it is done we have given fixed overheads that we have directly plotted the values so office expenses insurance and depreciation there will be no change so then we got fixed overheads total that is c so total overhead cost or total cost is equals to a plus b plus c that is d we will get so total cost is 1,39,500 1,50,700 for 70 percent capacity then estimated direct labor hours that is e that is how much 1,20,000 hours in all the cases then overhead rate per hour is equals to d by e that is total cost divided by estimated direct labor hours 
in case of 50 percent we get 1.16 1.26 in case of 70 percent capacity this is the precise way of calculating the answer and this is flexible budget chapter i have already made one video to explain all the concepts of flexible budget i will share the link of that video in the i button as well as in the description box please do watch that video to better understand this concept now we will take up the long question that is 10b this question is a very simple question given for 12 marks in the university examination the data is provided standard rate of wage per hour is 10 standard hours is 300 actual rate of wage is 12 actual hours is 200 you are required to calculate lcv lrv lev labor cost rate and efficiency variances when you come to the answer you prepare a table sh sr ah ar standard hours are 300 standard rate is 10 actual hours are 200 actual rate is 12 then apply the formula and get, get the answer lcv is equals to sh into sr minus ah into ar then sh is standard hours are 300 into 10 minus 200 into 12 actual hours into actual rate if you further simplify the answer is 600 f you are getting right then f stands for favorable positive answer you are getting then lrv is equals to ah into sr minus ar rate variance please r is equals to rate variance so that's the reason why we are taking the difference between standard rate and actual rate multiplied with actual hours clear so then apply the formula 200 as are the actual hours into sr is 10 ar is 12 so 200 into minus 2 is equals to 400a adverse then lev efficiency variance efficiency variance is equals to hours usage that is standard hours minus actual hours multiplied with standard rate so 10 into 300 minus 200 300 hours are standard hours 200 are the actual hours whereas 10 is the standard rate if you simplify the equation you will get 1000 f so in this way we can calculate the answers clear so this is the precise way of calculating material cost and labor cost variances I already i have made the basic concepts explanation formula explanation all those videos i will provide all those video links in the description box please do watch and understand uh, very clearly right so 11th a question calculate the trend percentage for the following figures of x limited taking 2014 as the base and interpret the interpret them in the sense we have provided the data related to 2014 to 2018 belongs to sales stock and pbit profit before tax right that is pbt profit before tax so we have to calculate trend percentage with the help of this question quite easy and we have to provide the interpretation even so if you see this answer so first table was prepared uh, year sales stock and profit before tax 2014 since 2014 is the first year we take that year as our base so 2014 considered as 100 in all the cases sales stock and profit before tax then since it is base it should be the denominator in all the cases in 2015 the trend is sales are increased to 124 percentage in the sense how did i get this value that is 2340 sales of 2015 is 2340 divided by 1881 why we are taking denominator this 1881 because 2014 is our base year in 200 i have clearly mentioned the calculation how do we derive these values right then sales were increased to 124 then 141 then 161 then 200 in the year 2018 it is 200 percent right how we got the year current year should be taken numerator and the base year should be taken denominator multiply with 100 you'll get the answer in the same way we calculated for stock and profit before tax even right so once we calculate this way we will get the trend percentages trend percentages is refers to it will provide the trend how the movement are declining taking place with regards to the financial data when you come to the interpretation is already available 
when you analyze the trend data of sales, stock and profit before tax are increasing year by year. They are increasing year by year. It is a very good sign, very good gesture by the company. Increasing in sales from 2014 to 2018 is 200%. In the sense, Within five years, the sales were increased to 200%. There is a 100% increase taken place. That is a very good thing for the organization. Stock is also increasing as the sales are increasing. When sales increases, stock, stock even will increase. That is an obvious fact. Then the next thing is profit before tax is also double. That is more than double. That is 209 in five years which is a very good uh, situation of the company overall the company's performance is excellent and good you can write clear because the profits are increasing sales is also increasing because sales is ultimate source of revenue for the organization so in this way you do the calculation of trend percentages then you write the interpretation Interpretation writing is very easy. You see if the if they are declining, you can say not satisfactory also. Right? So I hope I have given you clear picture regarding this. Now we'll take up the long questions. Long question which is uh, which was asked as a 10th question, B bit. So we have provided the entire what uh, income statement that is PL account. And we are asked to calculate gross profit ratio, net profit ratio, operating ratio, operating profit ratio, administrative expenses ratio. Very simple to calculate this because information is already available in the question. Now we will take up the answer. Again I have taken the question. When you come to the solution, first is gross profit ratio. Gross profit is already given. Gross profit carried down is 2,1000. What is the formula? Gross profit ratio is equals to gross profit by net sales into 100. Whenever we are calculating profitability ratios, net sales plays a very important role because the profit will be generated from sales only. So gross profit is already given 2,1000 divided by net sales are 5,60,000 given in the question. Multiply with 100, you will get the answer 35.89%. In the sense, your gross profit percentage is 35.89%. Right? So this is the way we can calculate gross profit ratio. Now net profit ratio, already net profit ratio formula is net profit by net sales into 100. Net profit directly given in the question that is 80,000, net sales are already available, 80,000 divided by 5,60,000 into 100, 14.29%. In the sense, our total net profit out of total sales is 14.29%, whereas gross profit is 35.89% out of our total sales. Once this is done, the next is operating ratio. This is very important ratio as far as the exams are concerned. Formula of operating ratio is equals to operating cost divided by net sales into 100. Now we must understand operating cost because our net sales is net sales already available in the question. Operating cost is equals to cost of goods sold that is COGS plus operating expenses. Operating expenses is equals to administrative expenses, office expenses, selling expenses collectively called as operating expenses which do not include of non-operating expenses and financial expenses even will not be included here. So when you see the question what are the operating expenses we have? We have admin expenses and selling and distribution expenses that is 20,000 and 89,000 collectively 19,000 are operating expenses. We don't take non-operating expenses which is directly given. Next is what? Cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold, goods sold formula is sales minus gross profit. One more formula we have but it is better to use this formula as the information is directly available. What is other formula? Other formula of COGS is opening stock plus purchases plus all direct expenses minus closing stock. But here we can utilize this formula sales minus gross profit. Sales is 5,60,000. Gross profit is 2,1,000. 3,59,000 is our COGS. Once you get COGS and operating expenses, the operating cost is equals to 3,59,000 plus 1,9,000 that is 4,68,000. Once you get operating cost, net sales we have already. So apply the formula operating cost 4,68,000 divided by 5,60,000 into 100 that is 83.57%. This is our what? Operating ratio. In the sense, total operating cost of the firm is 83.57%. Clear? 
Once this is done, we need to calculate operating profit ratio. Operating profit ratio is equal to operating profit by net sales into 100. What is our operating profit? Operating profit is equal to net sales minus operating cost. Already we have operating cost, therefore net sales is 5,60,000 minus operating cost is 4,60,000 is equal to 1 lakh is the operating profit. Clear? Now apply the formula 1 lakh is operating profit into operating profit 1 lakh divided by 5,60,000 is the net sales into 100. That is equals to 17.86%. In the sense what? Precisely your operating profit is 17.86% out of your what? Total sales, 17.86% is your operating, uh, what we call profit. And operating profit ratio also we can get 1 minus or 100 minus operating ratio. 100 minus 83.57 will get 17.86 or nearly that value, 17. Right? Or else operating profit ratio is equals to 1 minus operating ratio or operating ratio is operating ratio is equals to 1 minus operating profit ratio. Or 1 or 100 you can take. Right. In this way, you can calculate operating ratio. Once you calculate operating ratio, the final one is administration, administrative expenses ratio. The formula is administrative expenses divided by net sales into 100. Admin expenses directly given 20,000 divided by 5,60,000 as net sales into 100, 3.57. Total, out of the total sales, admin expenses are 3.57%. So, in this way, we can easily calculate what ratio analysis. I hope I have given you clear crystal picture of ratio analysis calculations Twelfth a question this is regarding the funds flow statement preparation so we have provided balance sheet uh, and we are asked to prepare fund flow statement from the following balance sheets of xl limited rupees amount in rupee amount in lakhs that is rupees in lakhs so we have provided liabilities and assets Without any adjustments, it's a quite simple problem you can easily do. I have already made the fund flow statement problems, uh, introduction, explanation, and everything is already done. I will provide the link in the uh, what we call description as well as in the i button. You can watch that. This is June July 2023 question paper question. Now you can see the answer here. I have kept the question even. So this answer will be segregated into three parts, statement showing changes in working capital to ascertain increase or decrease in working capital, adjusted p &L account to calculate funds from or funds lost in operations, whereas the third one and final one is statement of sources and application and it should get tally always as balance sheet because our source of funds should be equivalent to applications what we made. So very quickly we will start from the asset side, fix asset. Uh, last year 2018 was 3994, 19, 4933. So 18 to 19, the increase in fixed asset that will be taken as a purchase of fixed asset in application side of source of sources and application of fund. If you see purchase of fixed asset 939, we have taken and the depreciation last year 1651, 1927 current year. So the difference incremental change that is called as depreciation charge and fixed asset that is. 276 clear investment long term there is no change inventories will be taken as current asset then last year 1804 current year 2075 so current asset increases working capital even will increase then debtors last year were 687 current year is 1157 so increase in current asset increase in working capital cash at bank cash and bank balance even we have written as a current asset that is 844 512 so decrease in cash and ca cash and bank balance will be taken as decrease in working capital loans and advances here we have taken it as a current asset right since the information is not available we can presume it as a long term even when you presume it as a long term it should be taken in sources and application so since i have considered this as a current asset i have taken in current assets right so 622 6 uh, 63 increases 43 then total of current assets we made then current liabilities under current liabilities we have creditors only and current liabilities even we have so that we have taken then share capital share capital no change in the share capital therefore leave it reserves reserves should be taken as a basis for preparation of adjusted PL account in adjustment PL account what we have written by balance brought down 1660 to balance carried down 2499 since 
PNL is a liability, always shows credit bal balance. Therefore, you should start from buy balance brought down. I hope I made you understand. Then loan fund. So loan fund, what is happening with regards to loan fund? Loan fund is increasing. So we consider as a loan raised 501 in source side. Then current liabilities we have taken, credit as we have taken in working capital. Then we prepare the statement showing changes in working capital. We got the uh, balancing so figure of 637 that is increase in working capital. Please don't worry. I have provided, I have made all the basic problems of fund flow statement. I will provide the link of those videos in the I button as well as in the description box. Please do watch those, we watch those videos to understand better the concept of fund flow statement. This is university question. That's the reason why I am covering here. Clear? So then we got increase in working capital 637 that will be written as a application increase in working capital 637 then fund flows sorry funds from operation we calculated adjusted PL account closed funds from operation we got the credit side 1075 1075 funds from operation will be written as a source when you close this uh, what we call statement of source and uh, source and application of funds it will get tally so this is the way we need to prepare the fund flow statement clear this is university question and this kind of a questions you will find in any university examination clear i hope i made you understand now i will take up the fund flow statement 12th b question 12th a is already done i will share the link in the i button as well as in the description box you can see this is 2023 june july question paper of ccma usmania university right for all the universities the fund flow statement and cash flow statement will remain same cash flow statement videos are also available i will share in the uh, link in the i button as well as in the description box most of the videos links you will find in the description box please do watch and try to understand june july 2023 question paper so what it says from the following balance sheet of sm industries paper uh, sorry sm industries prepare fund flow statement following showing the workings clearly so comparative balance sheet we have given assets and liabilities 2019 and 20 data we have given goodwill plan and missionary current assets share capital pnl account current liabilities further information depreciation 20000 charge on plant and missionary was charged to pnl account of course it will be debited to pnl account dividend of 12000 were paid during the year with the help of this we have to prepare a cash sorry fund flow statement here so i have taken the question again so to prepare fund flow statements right so when you come to the answer, we have to prepare three statements. One is statement showing changes in working capital. Another one is adjusted PNL account. And the last one is statement of sources and application of funds. Simultaneously, we will draw all the three columns. Then we will start from the asset side. Goodwill last year, we had 30,000. Now it is 25,000. So goodwill written off will be written as 5,000. Right? So in this way goodwill is an intangible asset this will be considered as a goodwill written off and it will be written on the pnl adjustment account debit side so the next item is plant and missionary when you come to the plant and missionary there is an adjustment so we require to prepare a ledger account of plant and missionary since plant and missionary is an asset it should be written to balance brought down 60000 opening balance by balance carried on 50000 closing balance and depreciation on missionary 20,000 that will be recorded on the credit side by depreciation 20,000. The same 20,000 will be taken adjusted PNL account to depreciation on plant and missionary 20,000 on the debit side since, it's a, since it is a non cash item. Then current assets, current assets will be taken in uh, statement of change, statement of uh, showing changes in working capital. But before that, we have to close the plant and missionary accounts when we close the plant and missionary account we have to we, we are getting balancing figure on the debit side that will be considered considered as two bank purchases 10,000 so two bank purchases 10,000 in the sense we are losing money it is an application purchase of plant and missionary 10,000 will be recorded on the application side so we are done with assets so we, sorry we have to take up current asset even sorry in statement showing changes in working capital current assets we are writing 16,000 and 90,000 increase in current asset is an increase in working capital. Clear? Once this is done, we are done with assets. Now come to the liability, share capital. Share capital, a 60 to 65 increase. So issue of shares is a source, 5,000 money is getting in. 
PNL account. PNL account will be written as a buy balance brought down, two balance carried down in PNL adjustment account, right? Then current liabilities will be taken in statement of uh, statement showing changes in working capital. Current liabilities opening twelve thousand, closing three thousand, right? The decrease in sorry decrease in current liabilities will lead to increase in working capital. That is nine thousand. After this, we are done with the balance sheet. Now come to the adjustment depreciation. We have done dividend paid twelve thousand. Where it will be recorded? It will be recorded two sides. One is as a application dividend paid twelve thousand will be written in application size side of sources and application funds. Then the same value will be written dividend paid in P and R adjustment account debit side that is twelve thousand. Clear? Once this is done, everything is done. Now we will come to the closing of. a uh, statement showing changes in working capital once we close current assets and current liabilities summations we made and net working capital a minus b that is current assets minus current liabilities 4000 and 60000 for 19 and 20 we got so with the help of this we got the information as net increase in working capital is 12000 so then we will close this whenever you get increase in working capital it should be written in decrease to make this increase or decrease tally 12000 So increase in working capital is the application of funds. It will be written on the application side. Increase in working capital is twelve thousand. Once this is done, next is close the P&L adjustment account. We will get the balancing figure twenty nine thousand on the credit side. This is called as funds from operations. This funds from operation is always source. It will be written on the source side. That is twenty nine thousand. Clear. So in this way, we have to prepare statement showing changes in working capital, working capital and P&L adjustment account. Then. we will close the statement showing sources and application and fortunately we are tallying with 34000 so this is the way we need to solve the problems of funds flow statement clear i hope i made you understand the entire crux i went very fast but i hope you can understand thank you very much now when you come to the long question 13a this information is provided for calculation of cash flow statement for for preparation of cash flow statement sorry the following are the comparative balance sheet of xyz limited as on 31st december 2018 and 19 the information is 18 and 19 balance sheet information assets and liabilities we have provided land stock goodwill cash temporary investments temporary investment is refers to cash and cash equivalents only cash only that as share capital pnl account 9% debentures and creditors with the help of this information and additional information further we have provided dividend declared and paid during the year were rupees 17500 dividend declared and paid land was revalued during the year at rupees 150000 and the profit and revaluation transferred to profit and loss account this is very significant adjustment that we have provided you are required to prepare cash flow statement at the end of 31st Ma 31st december 2019 so with the help of this we have to prepare a cash flow statement so let's see the answer how to solve the problem so i have taken the question again now then we have to prepare the format according to accounting standard 3 that is cash flow statement entire format i have drawn here then in working note we have to do calculation of calculation of profit before tax and extraordinary item even so this two tables we have to draw in calculation of profit before and before tax and extraordinary item you should write profit and loss account whenever pnl account comes the balance comes that we will be writing here so once you draw the format then you start the problem from asset side land land is given 1 lakh and 1 lakh 50000 and there is an adjustment on land so we will prepare ledger account related to land since land in as is an asset shows which balance debit balance so to write in land account we write two balance brought down 1 lakh by balance carried down 1 lakh 50000 that is opening and closing balance now what adjustment says during the year land was revalued at rupees 1 lakh 50000 and the profit on this revaluation transfer to pnl account so what we have to do revaluation entry what is the entry of revaluation when asset is revalued asset account data to profit and loss account since we have transferred this revaluation value to which account pnl account so the entry was land account data to profit and loss account that is 1 lakh 
50,000 it was revalued in the sense opening value was 1 lakh and closing value is 1 lakh 50,000. So land was revalued during the year at 150 in the sense total revaluation is 150. The closing value 150 itself is that. So the difference of revaluation is 50,000 that is opening already we had one. So how much we have revaluated by 50,000 that we have recorded and this revaluation once we record in PNL account we will close the ledger account and we will write this revaluation on building in calculation of profit before tax and extra derivative item as a minus item though there is no cash inflow but we have increased our profit by 50,000 so therefore minus 50,000 we have to write once you close this account uh, you will not get any balancing figure since the account will get tallied then what we have to do next item is stock stock i have already uh, written here that is in working capital stock is one of the current assets so therefore it will come under working capital so stock was how much 2 lakh 46 thousand to 2 lakh 13 thousand 500 stock has been decreased when stock decreases we have to take this as a what source current asset decreases working capital will decrease Therefore, it should be taken as an add item. So, bear in mind precisely whenever current asset decreases, it is an add item. Current asset increases, it is a minus item. For liabilities, vice versa we have to do. That I will explain now. The After stock, we have goodwill. Goodwill last year we had 50,000. Now it is 25,000. It is quite clear that goodwill has been written off. In the sense, goodwill is an intangible asset. It was written off by how much? 25,000. This will be taken in adjustment for only as it is a non-cash item cash at bank and temporary investment both will be considered as cash therefore it will be taken opening cash balance that is 42,000 plus 3,000 collectively we will be writing 45,000 is our opening cash balance what is our closing cash balance closing cash balance is how much uh, 35,000 plus 4,000 right that we will record but before that we have to write debtors uh, so what is happening with regards to debtors debtors are increase in debtors how much 13500 there is an increase in debtors that will be written since current asset is increasing that will be a minus item to make you understand better i have kept it in red color it is not mandatory but you should write in brackets that is as a minus item so data increases the difference is written as a bracket item because decrease increase in data will leads to increase in working capital increase in working capital is application this is the concept here so once we are done with current assets and total asset part we will move to the liability set share capital last year our capital was 350 now it is 370 so increase in share capital is 20,000 so issue of shares is 20,000 that is a financing activity most important issue of shares will be considered as a financing activity that is 20,000 next is what profit and loss account so how much increase in profit that is 2400 that will be written as a PNL in calculation of profit before tax and extra item 2400 next 9 percent debentures debentures was 60,000 and 30,000 so we considered as a redemption of debentures in the sense we are giving back the debentures to the debenture holders that is 30,000 so that will be taken as a redemption of debentures right so after debentures we have creditors 51,600 last year now it is 59,200 what is the increase is taking place creditors that is one of the current as current liabilities therefore we will take in working capital change so creditors are increasing increase in creditors will lead to decrease in working capital decrease in working capital is source 7600 precisely you bear in mind whenever you are writing current assets and current liabilities it will be written in working capital change current asset increases put in bracket current asset decreases what we have to do as a source we have to take current liabilities do it opposite Current liability increases, source current liability decreases, application. This is the precise concept that you need to bear in mind while doing cash flow statement. I hope I made you understand. Clear? So once this is done, we will come to the adjustment. We are left with one adjustment. Dividend declared and paid during the year. Dividend declared and paid during the year will be written both the sides. One is calculation of profit before tax and extraordinary item. That is 17,500 as an add item. 
non cash item and this will be written in financing activity as a dividend paid application 17500 with the help of this we have done everything once we are done with everything now we will come to the closing first we will close, close profit before tax and extraordinary item so when we make the summation of three values that is 2400 50000 and 17000 so 50000 is the negative value we are getting the value 30000 uh, 100 is the negative value we are getting clear so what we have to do with this this value will be written as a, a profit before tax and extraordinary item okay so once you write this value then what you have to do uh, you make the summation of roman one cash flow from operating activities so we will get 5100 negative that is operating profit before working capital change then working capital consider then you will get cash generated from operation 21500 since we don't have any tax information in this question tax paid is zero therefore first item that is a bit cash flow from operating activity is 21500 positive in the sense cash generated from operations is 21500 then we don't have any investing activity that is zero then we calculate the financing activity three uh, values we have 20,000 minus 30 minus 17,500 so therefore we are getting the figure is 27,500 negative right so in this way we have calculated cash used in financing activities 27,500 so three values we got investing is zero operating and financing so make the summation of outer column three values that is minus 6,000 we are getting minus 6,000 plus opening cash value minus 6,000 is refers to as increase or decrease in cash and cash equivalents that is minus 6000 so to that we will add opening cash balance 45000 then resultant figure is 39000 this 39000 is the closing cash balance how we got 35000 plus 4000 temporary investment so i hope i made you understand the entire crux i have covered most important adjustment that is revaluation of asset adjustment this is very significant as far as the Usmane University and any other university exams. This is the maximum uh, what we call uh, strength of the question which will be asked in any university examination. Clear? So this will be the, this is the second question in the same uh, category. So two questions will be given from fund flow sorry cash flow statement. So the second question is the financial position of Ram as on 1st January 2017 was as follows. This is the uh, sole trader uh, information we have given how to prepare cash flow statement same procedure right but in this we have to prepare one capital account right so 17 opening 17 closing assets we have given cash data stock land building machinery credit as mr ram's loans loan from bank capital this information we have given other information is during the year proprietor withdrew 26000 for domestic purpose the provision for depreciation on machinery opening is 27 and closing is 36,000. Prepare cash flow statement. So let's start.
So now I have taken the question again for the quick review sake. So say thanks for watching the video. Do subscribe my channel, Mentor the Trusted Guide. And your subscription and your likes, your comments will always play a very significant role and it will motivate me to make more qualitative and informative content. Your support is highly significant unless and until you support it is not possible for me to prepare quality content. So your subscription, your likes and your comments will always motivate me and do the needful. Thank you very much.